Hey guys, Diana here from Garden Love. So I just wanted to do a quick video tasting this amazing navel orange from this tree that I've had for the last seven years, along with my Eureka lemon that I've talked about for the longest. You guys have seen in the previous video the humongous navel orange that came off. As you can tell, these don't have the navel as big as the other one, so they're not ready just yet. This one does. You guys see that? But I just wanted to do a quick tasting and I wanted to share with you guys and talk to you a little bit about this tree. I've had it for seven years and I honestly, I'm starting to believe that um, with these trees producing, it has a lot to do with the microclimate that they're in because when I moved to this house, I want to say that all of the trees that I brought over here, which was a full hauling truck load, <laughs> Um, have been producing a lot better than my previous house and honestly um, my previous house was only mm, I want to say a quarter of a mile away and I want to say maybe six blocks away not far at all from this house so it's not much of a zone difference it's just microclimate okay my previous house had a much bigger yard it was all concrete and it was open so there was a lot a lot of um of wind going through there and I don't know if you guys can see me there was a lot of wind going through there a lot of sun uh one year this tree was full of blooms i want i wish i had a picture i'm going to look for a picture and show you guys but the the tree looked like it was completely covered of blooms more than it had uh, leaves. So it was. I was for sure gonna get fruit. I was like, I'm gonna get fruit this year for sure because it's full of cover of blooms. And that year snowed actually in my area, which was very rare, and all the blooms fell off, and it, I didn't get any any fruit this year. I brought it over here. It's. I feel like it's a lot more shelter here with the trees that are surrounding. The tree, I feel like it does get sun, not as much as the other place. There's grass here, so I wanted to say that this area stays cooler than where we had it at the other place. And when it's cold, I think it's a little bit more uh, insulated with the tree surrounding it compared to the other one where it was just wide open. It um, So if it was windy, it was getting full wind. If it was hot, it was getting burning hot, hot heat. Um, you know, it was just, it was, I, I think... The microclimate was just way different the the heat and the cold were extreme heat and cold right here i think it balances out between the grass and there's not a lot of uh, asphalt or concrete here so it, i think that's contributing to the microclimate that's helping this tree produce fruit um i want to cut this open and show you guys what it looks like i've saved it since it fell off the tree and i wanted to make this video with you guys i should have brought a knife out but i didn't i'm gonna do it like i used to as a kid just start peeling it off and um it's pretty thick so the navel oranges are known to have thicker skin compared to the valencia oranges the orange valencia oranges have thinner skin and uh, I believe they have, they're meant to be juicier. I'm not sure when I got this tree, this tree was given to me. So I didn't know what kind of tree it was. And um, I've been really blessed with a lot of Chris, uh, with a lot of trees that have been given to me. So I feel very, very blessed for that. Um, Steve Liz have given me a lot of trees and um, I got this as a gift as well. Let me see, I'm over here. You guys can see the tree in the background that little tiny thing so it it hasn't grown pretty tall it's a dwarf tree Ooh, just dug into that mm. wow it's really good so at my the new place where i'm working at the person who owns the guy the man who owns the company i'm working for actually owns a ranch in santa barbara and I showed him this orange, I brought it to work, and he said, let it sit for a little bit so it can get sweeter and juicier. So I did, and I saved it, and I wanted to make this video with you guys. So look at that. This um, navel orange does have the thicker meat than the Valencia. The Valencia, usually, you just peel one, one layer out, and you see the fruit, the meat. 
or the juice i'm not sure what it's called but with this one you do kind of have to take a little bit of layers off to get to it if you if you don't mind eating that then you could just leave it but here we go this is a little bit whoa <laughs> it is juicy whoa i should have brought a knife guys this is yummy just want to show you guys what the inside looks like you guys see that it is delicious i'm so glad i saved this to share with you guys mm. it's sweet but it has a little a little a little like tang like it's a little sour but it's perfect i love sour some people don't hold on guys i'm gonna sit here on the grass because i was kind of squatting Let's see so it is really really tasty I don't mind this honestly I don't mind this when, when I do buy orange juice I like the one that has the pulp I don't mind all this meat some people do if you do mind it I would suggest you grow the Valencia orange not the navel orange and quite frankly, like I mentioned, I didn't even know for all these years what kind of orange that I had I was growing. But I was very eager to wait and see what the orange looked like because I knew I was going to be able to tell if it had this, this kind of like belly button. That is the navel orange, okay? So that's a good way for you guys to tell whether you have a Valencia or a navel orange. The skin and this little... <laughs> Just do want some orange. So, um that's it guys i just wanted to share this tasting orange with you guys i'm about to eat the rest and share with my daughters give them a little taste to see if they like it i wanted to tell you how long i had it for it's been about seven years and this is the first year that i actually got orange out of them i don't think it's because of the tree i honestly want to say that it's because of the microclimate that i had it in um i don't think it was allowing those um blooms to actually stay on and i also what another thing i wasn't where i had it i wasn't getting a lot of pollinators so i wasn't getting any um bumblebees to pollinate my blooms and i'm sure that had a lot to do with it but now that i'm here in this house that has a smaller yard my trees are loving it they're loving it here the microclimate microclimate is ideal so if you get a brand new tree I would suggest that you put it surrounding other trees just until it grows if you have it in containers if you have it in if you're gonna put it straight in the ground and it's wide open I would suggest maybe put some pots with other plants so then it can create a tiny little microclimate to shelter that tree until it gets big and mature enough to actually fend for itself um, and I honestly have to say that this tree was wide in the open the heat was too hot and it was on top of concrete so it was creating even more heat for the container right now it's partially in the ground so it's gonna it creates some coolness and uh, it would allow worms to go in there the other where I had it at the other house it was just on the concrete no worms were gonna access that when the concrete would get super hot the c container was gonna get super hot and the roots were getting super hot so it was just not a ideal situation so those are things to consider when you're getting a fruit tree in a container um, at least if you want it in a specific spot and it's in those conditions I would suggest to at least let the tree mature in a different position in a different um, microclimate and different area where it is getting some shelters from other plants have access to dirt for the worms to go inside the container and um, once it's mature enough maybe you can move it to the concrete and it'll be mature enough to actually fend for itself and protect and do whatever it is that it needs to do to take care of itself but um, if it's a young tree I highly highly suggest to give it some shelter with other plants and um, you know who likes to be alone I know I don't so um, it's kind of like the plants have friends to hang out with <laughs> so anyways guys that's just my only tips about growing a uh, citrus in a container make sure that you provide the right microclimate for it the right area for it the right container this one is uh, 
a wine barrel but it's a plastic one so it, i want to say maybe three thirds of a an, um, an actual wine barrel made out of wood i want to say that's maybe like a 40 gallon container it's not that big it's actually after i, I take the fruit off i'm going to um take it out put new soil in there and put it back in there or maybe put it in an actual wine barrel i haven't made up my mind but I'll, once i get there i'll share that with you guys i'm going to wait a little bit till um uh winter goes by um, probably the beginning of spring maybe february i'll start doing that so stay tuned for that if you guys want to see what i'm going to put inside the container and how i'm going to repot it let me know if you're interested in that anyways guys i think i'm rambling and i think i get i do this when i talk about my trees <laughs> So I'm going to say goodbye now and leave you guys with this tasty orange. I hope you guys have a blessed weekend. I hope to see you guys soon in some of your videos. And uh, if I don't see you till the end of the year, I uh, hope you guys have an amazing Christmas, an amazing and safe New Year's. And that's it, guys. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye.